urban centers in the country are less concerned about the increased rate of environmental dilapidation. This has hindered the growth of many sectors, which in return has stagnated the economy over the years. There is an increasing level of disparity between urban and rural areas. The problems of the urban areas are as a result of the influx of people from the rural areas, traffic congestion, and population amongst others. Some problems arise due to the pressure of people using the facilities compared to the number of people it was designed for. Nigeria's urban infrastructure is crumbling. Water supply, sewage, sanitation, drainage, bills, electricity and waste disposal all suffer from years of serious neglect. POD can retain maintenance. By far the most cost-effective infrastructure is spending is almost zero. It has become the norm in Nigeria to wait for a capital infusion to rehabilitate, replacing instead of maintaining the infrastructure. But declining financing resources is making this less feasible and deterioration is accelerating. Compounding the situation is rapid urbanization caused by migration from rural areas. The number of people living in Nigeria's towns and cities is expected to double to 80 million in the next 13 years. Urbanization is a positive force in development. Cities and towns are home to most industries, commerce and services, all of which can be highly productive. Urban pollution and poor management of municipal waste add to the health hazards. Numerous industries dump untreated and often toxic liquids in open gutters, streams, rivers and lagoons. And as elsewhere, fumes from vehicles contaminate the air and water. Over 55% of infrastructures across urban centers in Nigeria have not been fully operational for the past decade. This is associated with poor urban renewal plans, lack of regeneration policies, increased poverty, insecurity, corruption, insufficient environmental regeneration, stakeholders' differences, and inefficiency in incorporating people's initiatives. Nonetheless, Sustainable urban renewal in Nigeria is important to mitigate against climate change challenges. This is because while most urban centers are located on low-lying coastlines, others are located in the arid zones of the country. The increased number of aged buildings in most urban centers such as Lagos, Ibadan, Kano and Port Akot, has also increased the demand for urban renewal across Nigeria. Moreover, the infrastructure gap between urban populace and the environment has continued to widen. The first urban slum renewal in Nigeria was implemented in 1951, with a slum area of about 28.34 hectares in central Lagos. This urban renewal project was initiated due to poor accessibility, inadequate parking facilities, poor drainage and sewer systems, and lack of open space. Also, the poor health condition and waste disposal systems in urban slums have increased the outbreak of communicable diseases. Lack of sufficient funds limited the success of the first urban regeneration project in Nigeria. Other regeneration projects across the country have also been marred by lack of resettlement plan for existing occupants in such areas. Increased poverty and social injustice are also issues that have been made of major concern. The plight of major residents displaced forcefully by the military government of Lagos State in 1991 during its regeneration exercise readily comes to mind. Other challenges faced by the urban renewal in Nigeria include poor urban regeneration policy, low level of awareness, insufficient urban built environment professionals, differences in stakeholders' interest, and lack of infrastructural database. Extreme deprivation remains a major concern for more than 1 billion people living in slums. Cities continue to be the major contributor to the total greenhouse gas emissions. Urban centers account for 70% of the world's gross domestic product. Then you have to look at what does the urban planning law in those states say with regards to the IPCC statement. Is the urban department or the, the, the ministry in charge of such actually aware of the IPCC report? If it does, what does it do to make sure that the effect will not be so much on the people? Are we looking at the kind of foundation we are doing so that it doesn't impact so much and create depression? 
those are the things we have to talk about. If you are talking about the usage of water, are we talking about getting more dams or making the dams that we have more effective? Are we looking at the culture of the people? People put on their lights from morning till evening, and there's actually no light. We now use a lot of generator, and which, and actually, come to think of it, is it that the so-called non-industrialized country, who uses almost 80% of the generators in the world, are they actually not polluting? These are the questions. 70% of, or 80% of Victoria Island is actually running on generator as we speak. Or practically almost 60 to 70 or 80 percent of Lagos is running on generator as we speak. Is that not part of the climate change issue we're talking about? That's part of the emission process. So for non-industrialized nations like us, we have to take the game to the next level and make sure that also areas like our power is working effectively so that the amount of carbon that we also emit is also is our Ministry of Transport working? Do we not have so much vehicles on the road emitting the so-called carbon? Well, as people might say putting all this together might not be substantial enough, but it's actually a contributing factor. The aim of the United Nations meeting is to provide a multi-stakeholder platform to demonstrate how urbanization can be transformation in the integration of economic, social, and environmental dimensions of sustainable development. Integrated approaches to sustainable urbanization targets multiple development efforts and allow for the strengthening of synergies between efforts to achieve different goals such as health, education, water and sanitation, maternal and child health, empowerment of women and environmental sustainability. Around the world, cities are centers of educational opportunity, technological innovation, and economic growth. And more than ever, cities are also crucial to environmental sustainability. And they're the key to confronting the greatest environmental threat facing the world today, and that is climate change. Cities must adapt to climate risks and do what they can to reduce them. But those actions can bring other benefits as well, because local investments in sustainability also help attract private investment, drive economic growth, improve public health, and raise the standard of living. As impact of climate change becomes more evident and widespread, cities will need to be prepared to adapt to new challenges to safeguard the large populations. That's our program for today. Thank you for tuning in. This episode and other episodes of Earth File is on our YouTube channels, youtube.com slash channelswell. And should you have any comments or questions, our inbox at file at channelstv.com is available any day and anytime for me. I like a and everyone here, it's bye for now.